Hi. Now, in this next part, we're asked to find an equation for the normal to the curve h at the point p with coordinates minus 3, 3. So as usual, if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So let me just put this point P on the curve, minus 3, 3. It's clearly going to be over here and somewhere up here. Um, but if I was to draw the normal at the curve here, it's going to look like a vertical line. So what I'm going to do is, this is totally out of scale, but I'm just going to assume that that point P is here. So if we just mark that point P in with coordinates minus 3, 3, OK, then the normal at this point here would be a line that's going to go somewhere like this. OK, even now I'm going to angle it a little bit more away from being perpendicular to this curve. Now being a straight line, it's going to have the form y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. I find it's much more useful to use this form rather than y equals mx plus c. A lot quicker. m being the gradient then, and x1, y1 being a point on the line. Well, I've got x1, y1. It's going to be minus 3, 3. And all I need is m, the gradient. And I can get the gradient by differentiating the equation of the curve. That will give me the gradient at any point on the curve. Then I'm looking at the gradient of the tangent when x equals minus 3. And then I can use the perpendicular gradient rule to get what this gradient is. So I hope it's given you some idea where I'm going with this anyway. Again, you might like to pause the video at this stage and uh, carry on. But uh, essentially then, I've got to get that gradient first of all. So I'm going to take the curve and I'm going to want to differentiate it. This term here, I'm going to rewrite. Remember, this is 3 times 1 over x. 1 over x is x to the minus 1, so I can rewrite this as 3 multiplied by x to the power minus 1, then plus 4. So when it comes to differentiating this, with respect to x, we get dy dx equals, and in the usual way, it'll be minus 1 times 3, which is minus 3. Take 1 away from the power, so that's x to the power minus 2. When it comes to differentiating a constant, that goes to zero. Now it's a good idea not to leave this as a negative power. Remember this is minus 3 multiplied by 1 over x squared, which will come to minus 3 over x squared. So that's the gradient at any point x on the curve. Now we're looking at the gradient at the point p. So at p, we know that the gradient of the tangent will be when x equals minus 3. So that gives us dy by dx equaling minus 3 divided by x squared. So that's divided by minus 3 all squared. So what you get here is minus 3 over plus 9. That's going to reduce down to minus 1 third. Now we can get the gradient of the normal because we should know that the product of the two gradients should come to minus 1. So all we've got to do is just take the reciprocal of minus a third and switch the sign. So we just have an intro here, therefore gradient of normal okay, would equal, well taking the reciprocal would give me minus 3 and then you switch the sign and it's now 3. So that the product of the two gradients, that's 3 multiplied by minus a third, comes to negative 1. OK, so uh, that's given us the gradient of the normal. So I can now go on to find the equation of the normal. So we'll just write a little intro here. That is the equation of the normal. OK. At P is, and what's it going to be? 
Well, it's going to be y minus y1. We'll take y1 then as being the 3 there. Equals m, the gradient, which is 3 multiplied by x minus x1, x minus minus 3, so it's going to be x plus 3. Now you could leave it like that. It says find an equation for the normal, so that's an equation. You might want to carry on, it's up to you. If I was to carry on and expand the bracket, I'd get y equals 3x plus 9. And then I could add 3 to both sides and I'd get y equals 3x plus 12. I always find that this kind of format is quite useful because you can see whether it looks reasonable. I can see I've got a positive gradient, which is what this line would be, and it crosses the y-axis at 12, okay, when x is naught, and that's possible. But leaving your answer like this is acceptable.